Heat embossing and watercolouring is a match made in heaven, and when you combine it using your inks or reinkers, you expand the colour palette so much more. Today I'm using the new Butterfly in Bloom stamp set and die to create a partially die cut fun butterfly card. Hi, I'm Verity and welcome to my YouTube channel and blog Pretty Little Button, where I make paper crafting tutorials for the everyday crafter. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be using the new Butterfly in Bloom stamp set that has been released with Catherine Pooler's Creative Thinking release. So I'm going to be using the big floral butterfly and I want to stamp this first onto some watercolour cardstock because we are going to do some watercolouring with inks. We need to add water to the cardstock. So we need some heavyweight cardstock that is going to be able to absorb the ink and the water and not peel. So that's why I'm using a watercolour cardstock today. I'm going to heat emboss it because I want to use the embossing to create a bit of an emboss resist with the watercolouring and this is the best way to do it with embossing powder. I'm prepping the cardstock panel just to make sure I've got none of my inky or oily fingerprints over that and then I'm going to stamp in clear slow drying embossing ink from WOW the butterfly stamp. I'm covering this in the super fine metallic silver embossing powder from WOW. I haven't used silver embossing powder in a while and I just really thought this would go beautifully with the colour palette that I plan to use. Of course once you've covered it with embossing powder it's time to heat set it with your dual speed heat gum and this is where you see that magic of the embossing powder melt into that beautiful metallic shine and once that butterfly has been completely melted you get a gorgeous looking floral butterfly. Now you could leave it as is but we're going to step it up by adding some fun colour. So this is the colour palette I'm going to be using and you can use your ink pads if you haven't got any of the reinkers. You just need to smush a bit of the ink onto the lid of the ink pad just to get a bit of ink for your palette. But I'm going to use these in the reinker form. So I'm just going to add some drops of the colours onto acrylic blocks. I've placed them on top of some scrap white paper just so that it makes it easier to see the colours. Now I'm going to colour in the left hand side of the butterfly first. And what I'm going to be doing is just adding drops of the colour over areas of the butterfly. Now I have prepped the, that side of the butterfly with some clean water first and then I'm just dropping in the colours where I wish for the colour to be. So the colours I am using are the colours that were released in the Date Night inks and I'm starting off with Chiffon and then Catching Rays. Because I'm using a wet or matte technique the colour will start to move around and blend and that's what I want because I want it to soften up and blend. I'm not going for a perfect colouring, I want the colour to bleed out of that side of the butterfly as well. So this side is going to have the colours sort of bleeding outside of the lines, as though the colours are starting to fly away in the, the sky and the air. The colours I'm using are a rainbow mix, so you do need to bear in mind what colours you are placing next to one another, because you don't want obviously to get a brown muddy colour. If you do place any colours close to each other, you wouldn't necessarily want to encourage them to blend into one another too much if they are likely to create a brown colour. So I'm dropping in some blues and then going in with some of the pinks, greens and purples as well. And as I say, I'm just adding water as well to it just to allow the colours to smooth blend. And I'm adding water around the edges of the floral and the butterfly just to smooth out the fade of the colour into nothing because I want it to look like it's just disappearing and fading away into the air, sky air. I am trying to keep some of the greenery on more of where the leaves are and keeping some of the florals the same colour and bearing this in mind with the actual design. For the second side of the butterfly, this I'm going to keep very nice and neat and I'm going to stay within the actual shape of the butterfly. I'm just covering the whole area of that side first in some clean water because I'm going to add the colour in again and I want to get a nice smooth blend. I'm then going to start adding from the top all the way down the butterfly the colours in the rainbow order because I want to create this as a very nice neat rainbow blend. So we're going from Dozy Do to Catching Rays to Chiffon to In The Park, Cumberbund, Drive In, Serenade and Pucker Up. And then you get this beautiful vibrant butterfly that has got a rainbow over both wings, one with a beautiful seamless blend and one with a patchy organic rainbow colour blend. 
Now, once it's dry, we're going to die cut this out, but we're only going to partially die cut this. What my plan was, was just to die cut the right hand side of the butterfly. I wanted to lift that wing up because it's got a lovely clean definition and outline because we've not allowed the colour to go outside of the line on the right hand side. I'm going to lift that up. So I'm just positioning the die in place with some washi tape and then I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. But I'm only going to have the plates covering the right hand side of the butterfly. And this will go up to the middle of the butterfly. So I will ensure that the pipes do not cover anything from the midpoint of the butterfly to the left. This means that it will, the die will only cut where the plates are. So as I remove the washi tape and remove that die from the panel, you will see that the right hand wing of the butterfly has cut out nicely and I can lift that up, whereas the remainder of the butterfly has not been cut. So I experimented around with a variety of different card stocks to determine which colour card I wanted to use and I'm using a lovely soft tealy colour card stock here, I think this might be sea glass. And then I have foam mounted the panel onto the card. To give a little bit more interest I'm also foam mounting the wing as well and I'm adding several layers of foam to the back of the wing just to sit this up so you can see the colour popping beneath that wing as well. So to finish this card off, I just kept it really nice and simple and added a sentiment strip using a sentiment from the Sincere Thanks stamp set from Catherine Puller Designs. I heat embossed this in white onto a black card strip. Then lastly, to embellish the card, I just added a few clear Nouveau drops in Morning Dew, just to add a little bit more interest. If you're interested in any of the products that have been used in today's video, just check out the subscription, just check out the description box below and there'll be links to those products. If you want any more information, I've also got a blog post where there's plenty of more photos for you to see. If you're new to my channel, why not think about subscribing and hitting that bell icon to be notified when my next video is up. Until next time, happy crafting!